So, let's say your Prusa Mini won't turn on. You suspect that the power supply has kicked the bucket. Can you fix it? Should you fix it? In this video, I'll show you how to diagnose power problems on a Prusa Mini and take a look inside its supply to see if there's any usable fixable parts in that. If you suspect that your Mini's power supply is damaged, the best way to test is use a multimeter and see if it's producing 24 volts. The Mini uses a round 4-pin plug. This connector is a 4-pin Minidin Kaikon Snap and Lock DC power connector. Of the 4 pins, two of them are for 24 volt power, the other two are ground. The outside of the connector is also grounded, the sheath. Theoretically, these are all separate power and ground, however, the two power pins, as well as the three ground sources, are tied together as soon as you get to the buddy board. Testing this supply of the plug is somewhat problematic. Because your two power pins are surrounded by ground pins, it's very easy to short power to ground with your typical multimeter probe. Instead, I recommend testing on the Mini itself by removing the electronics cover. If your Mini won't power on at all, there are a few things to test. Power coming in, power making it past the power switch, and of course, the fuses. Let's take a look at the buddy board at the power coming in. First off, all the grounded points on the buddy board are tied together, so to test the power input, any of the mounting screws will work great, as will the chassis of the Ethernet connector. For the 24 volt, the pad closest to the plug is the power's first destination, going onto a fast on connector over to the power switch. Here we're using the multimeter on continuity tester to show that all of the grounding points are indeed connected. Anytime you see something other than the 0L, that means you are there's a complete circuit between the two points of the probe touching. Normally this will be in a beep mode, here we're doing the voiceover so we don't have the audible beeps on it. Once the power has come into the mini, it goes straight to the power switch, and if that's turned on, it goes right back to the second fast on connector. So you can check with your power switch in the on position if there's continuity between the two pins on the buddy board. Turning the switch off should make sure that there's no connection. It's very easy to bypass the switch by connecting these two fast on connectors. Obviously not recommended, but if your switch has died, it'll work fine in a pinch. You'll notice we still do not have any power coming into the Prusa Mini. This is obviously a lot safer than having testing the live voltage. When we need to test the power supply, make sure it's outputting 24 volts. We'll test that directly using the probe points that we're already using. However, right now we're just making sure that the switch has continuity and will pass any power it's given through. If the power supply is doing well, we can also test the fuses. There are two. One is for the heated bed, which is a 7.5 amp fuse, and the other is for everything else. Your motors, your hot end heater, the fans, everything else is on that 3 amp fuse. These are standard car fuses available pretty much at any auto place, and you can visibly see the fusible link. That's the wire in the middle. If the fuse is blown, you won't be able to see that, that wire. You'll see the break in the wire. If you're not great with numbers or um, reading, you can see that the 7.5 amp fuse has a much thicker wire than the 3 amp fuse. The whole idea being that if the current going is too high, the fuse will pop before any of the expensive, difficult to replace electronic components are damaged. Replacement. The switches and fuses are easy enough to replace. Links to the part down in the description. In a pinch, you can bypass the switch by jumpering from one fast onto the other. It's not a big deal. Bypassing the fuse or running the wrong rating on a fuse will work, but you risk catastrophic damage to your buddy board. Fuses are cheap, it's worth getting the right one. Anytime you have a blown fuse, it's also worth checking around to see why the fuse blew. Was it a power surge? Was there a short in the line? Were you poking around inside your mini with the power on and accidentally shorted out something? Ideally, any modifications should be removed before replacing a fuse and testing the buddy board as stock as you can get. Right, so finally we are here to test the power supply. Make sure you switch your multimeter over to voltage setting, and we'll see if we have 24 volts coming into the Prusa Mini. I'm holding one lead on the rightmost screw mounting hole, and I'll be going to the first uh, fast on connector. Ah, uh, nice. 24.4 volts. Does not have to be exact, ooh, hello, but 
we do know now we have good power coming into our mini. We've tested all the fuses, so this guy should be good to power on. Now, if your power supply has been hit by a tiny meteorite or is otherwise beyond repair, replacements are available from Prusa Research. They're pretty expensive. As I said, the connector is a 4-pin Mini Din Kaikon Snap and Lock DC power connector. You can replace just the connector if you bent, if it got um, stepped on or something. You can even buy a replacement connector and add on another 24 volt supply you have lying around. The power isn't that special. You could easily bypass the connector and run 24 volt right into the buddy board. For this, you can use one of the ring terminals on one of the buddy board's mounting screws and then wire directly into the power pin. That's how I like to do the power on my print shift part ejection system. Um, and mind, this is not a shameless plug. I, I am mildly ashamed. Please check out the other videos in my channel. Alright, so now, what is inside your power supply? Looking at this, it's got the nice label on it. If you feel around, you can find that there are four screw holes. These are for a T10 Torx connector, Torx uh, driver. And it's easy enough to unscrew and open up the supply. Mostly, when you're looking at a supply, you're looking for the part that's burnt, and then you look it up on the Googler and you can replace it. Ideally, the power supply is going to have a fuse on the input side, which will be an obvious failure point, and also easy to replace. Now, it does not have a place for an external fuse, so it's really not intended to fail. You're going to generally need to solder if you have to unscrew your supply. Upon opening, the supply is wrapped in an aluminum shield with a heat spreader all over it that appears to be spot welded on. There is, however, a soldered in fuse on the AC side, a 5 amp, 250 volt slow blow fuse. I'll throw a link down that in the description. Basically the only thing that can be replaced. Uh, this is a working supply, so I don't really want to open it up. If you do have an issue with your supply and don't want to open up your mini, you could also plug this in as it's been disconnected. Not recommended due to the exposed AC lines, but it would be easy enough to probe the um, DC end of the supply. And if your supply has failed, there's no real reason not to open it up and to peel off the aluminum casings, see if there's anything you can replace inside. One note, this is an Generally a high voltage switching power supply, it bumps the voltage up. It's going to be chock full of capacitors, so letting the supply sit for you know, a good 10-15 minutes to let them discharge, always a good idea. And anytime you're opening up something with AC on, I really recommend not plug it in while you got the exposed wires out. Anyways, hope this was helpful. If I do manage to destroy a power supply, I'll do a follow up video where I do a full teardown where it's not intended to be put back together and we'll take a look at what all the components are. Happy printing!